Hello world and universe. In this episode of Future Tech, I'm going to be talking to martial artist and business leader, Aslak Da Silva. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Jason, for having me. Nice to be here. Yeah, man, this is going to be a cool episode of Future Tech where we're going to talk about how AI-powered vending machines are disrupting shopping and specifically grab-and-go shopping, which uh, I guess it's, is that like a new term, grab-and-go shopping, or is it more just like any vending machine is like grab-and-go? Isn't that really what? Well, basically, yeah, vending machines, but there are also other kind of types of grab-and-go. So you just get um, Amazon Fresh and other things you've been heard, hearing about or anything that you just don't need to queue and wait for somebody to serve you. You just grab and move up forward. Yeah. All right. So that's kind of like the first question I, I had for you when I first saw this and I saw your website. Why is an AI-powered vending machine different from like a regular vending machine? I know AI-powered, obviously, there's going to be something to it, but tell everyone listening what the difference is. Yeah, of course, for uh, for a consumer, it might from outside, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. um, so what we want to build here with Selfie Store is that uh, the buying um, experience, same as using your home fridge or freezer. So you just tap your card to open the door, grab the items, one or many that you want, and then just close the door and move forward. Oh. Where the AI then comes in is that it's helping the merchant or the operator to have just the right assortment at the right price for you when you're coming. Of course, not personally for you, but based on data then that what is predicted to be sold at that time. That's, super, that that's, that's super interesting. And you open the door, take the stuff out, and then you get charged based on what you took out of the door. Yes. That's yeah. smart. That's well, sl more smarter than getting your money caught in the machine, <laughs> pushing the button, watching the thing twirl, and then it gets stuck, and then you got to knock on the machine. Uh, everyone's been there and done that, man. Yeah. So you mentioned um, data, right? So what kind of impact um, and data analytics have you have you been seeing on the consumer buying habits? Well, yeah. So how how we pick it up? So of course, yeah. If you have one vending machine, one location, so the data you're gonna get is not that much. So based on that, you cannot do too many predictions what's going to happen. Of course, you will see what kind of beverages will sell, or maybe you have some salads that are very popular. But what we are doing is since we're operating in more than 20 countries in Europe, so we are collecting all the data from all the machines that are out there oh, wow. and then combining it with different categories and location and, and enhancing the data also with other sources, let's say like weather or um, you could use mm. da like a traffic data if there's a huge traffic jam, so something different will happen or you have a big event in the area. So you can start seeing that maybe at you that can time plan more with these yeah. data points, you can start planning things around it. So like you could like literally say like there's this event every year and the last year's event, the data shows that like these salads and these drinks sold the most. So let's make sure there's double of those or something. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's really cool. I like that. So tell tell me a little bit more about how merchants have been able to improve their business through the data besides what we just talked about. Are there any other aspects that we're not talking about here? Well, yeah, there are lots of examples here. Um, try to keep it simple so that everybody yeah. will understand and I will understand. It's not always easy <laughs> to understand what AI does, right? We got, we got to dumb it down, right? <laughs> yeah, for me, not for the listeners. But um, a good example is that we were, uh, many merchants are asking me that, okay, should I put Coke Zero or Pepsi Max in there? Um, and then the answer is yeah, yes. And then they're like, yeah, but which one? So um, based on the data, actually, it, if you put them both, so, so all the products inside the cabinets will sell more. And the reason is, of course, very simple that, okay, some are brand oriented for Pepsi, some are for Coke, but it would be impossible to do this kind of A-B testing that's maybe more familiar from marketing, that you kind of have two different copy text and you test which is, which is better and then move forward with the other one. But here it's way more difficult. You cannot test. It's the same conditions at the same time. But here from the data that we work from other cabinets, so we'll be able to see that, hey, actually there were cabinets that had only Pepsi Max. There were cabinets which only had um, a Coke Zero, but they changed it. And what happened to the sales? Mm -hmm. So then that's why we need the big data pool from all the machines. And then we saw for, as an example that actually if you have both of them, so not only you sell both different type of beverages, but you also sell other items in that. And that actually increased the sales by 43%. So wow. then that was a useful information that you have the same location. Would you want to sell 43% more from the location? Everybody says yes. So then the tip comes from the AI that then just do this. Something that I, I want to talk about because this might not be typical on my podcast, but this is future tech. So anyone who's been wanting to get into like a hardware startup or AI startup with hardware, and maybe they're just like daunted by like, you know, how impossible or they're intimidated by impossible, it seems you must have hit some challenges 
while building Selfie Store. So there must have been some challenges you faced. What were they? Well, first of all, of course, then uh, since all the merchants might they name the products they're going to sell for their purposes. So when we were starting looking at the data, so there might be plenty of yeah, let's use the Pepsi Max or uh, Coke Zero example. So, but it does actually matter if it's a can or if it's a bottle. What's the size? Um, you might have a salad of the day and then different languages. So what we had to do first was actually go dig into the data and and have just humans to just sort it out in a way that okay, we see the picture. This is actually a can of Pepsi, and ensure that all the data is correct because if it's not mm. correct so then it's going to skew the data and all the the analysis the AI is going to do is going to wrong going wrong the other thing that we had to do is then kind of categorize these that make sense so we might call we call it fresh food or meals or salads and then see that what goes into that because after that when the categories are there so then AI is really good in using this data analytic tools and picking up something there but you just don't know exactly what you're looking for. So you need to have plenty of work with the data first that what could the AI find there? So we mm -hmm. were looking for what are the popular combos to price points? Um, are combo deals doing better or how much is sold by discounts as an example? So we have this dynamic pricing tool. Um, and to our surprise, it was actually that almost 8% of the revenue generated is generated by discounts. Um, so then the next question is, okay, what should you discount and how much? And then again, that's why you need to build the data in a proper way to be able to ask these questions from AI and build them the algorithms for that. I mean, that's super interesting. I mean, I like when I hear the word algorithm and vending machine, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I, this must have helped retailers in some way, or it must be helping retailers. Like, let's say like someone listening says, hey, I want to put one of these machines in my shop, right? What are yeah. the benefits of doing that? Yeah, so what we then, what we believe, so first of all, I mean that, of course, consumers are interested in buying from new machines in a way, and, and how does it look? So that uh, the proper lighting, ease of use, everything is important. Then we put a screen on top, so which you can, then you get the in-store advertising and you get the attention. So if you're selling Pepsi Max, it's good to show that you are selling that so that people see from far. Does that screen be. change? Like, is it, like, yes. is it keeps changing? So like people, the listeners can't see this, but if you watch the video, you can see behind Aslack, there's some images of it and your website also shows it. It's a very cool looking vending machine. It's very thin. It's not as big and bulky as the other ones. Um, and it also has the screen on top. So I noticed that. So it's very cool looking and it does attract attention. Yeah. And then on top of that, then what hap starts to happen is that, of course, we use this RFID technology, which means that all the items are kind of, they have this RFID tag, which means they're individually put in. Um, what it does is then that we can, uh, and, and whoever is operating, so knows who, was refilling at what time exactly which products were put in. So then we can follow that, okay, which are the products that are selling that gives mm. a good in input or which are not. And then we also can put in the, and, and all our merchants put the kind of expired date on the product. So if you're selling fresh salad as an example, so then it can automate this kind of uh, discount. So kind of putting the red tax that this is now minus 30% today. Tomorrow. Are they able to do that in real time from their office and not have to come in? They can just set, set type in the, uh, the discounts they want. And then all of a sudden the machine says 30%. Are you kidding me? Right? Yes. Yeah, that's what you can do. That's you a do huge, this. that's a yeah. huge, I mean, we got we, we to gotta talk about that for a second. Yeah. That's a huge selling point because, you know, if you have expiring items, I mean, I go to like Wawa and other convenience stores in the area and they don't do that. It's just what, what you see is what you get. If it's there, it's there. If you can like on the fly change the pricing of it and then people come in after work and they want a salad and it's 30% off, I mean, you're going to sell out. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, of course, it's not physically changing the labels there, but uh, the, the machine and the screen again. Shows yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's showing, but it's showing somewhere. It's showing yes. somewhere. And when you pay for it, you're getting the discount in your, yes. your payment. So that's huge. Now, let's say that a business owner wants to put one of these into their business. What steps would they have to take in order to do that? And, and what kind of level of technology experience do they need in order to run one of these machines? Yeah, the yeah. So of course we we are working now mainly in Europe, coming to the US soon, hopefully. Um, so we work with the, each market with the reseller or distributor who's there. Um, of course via our website you can be in touch with us, and we'll we'll find out who's the proper person to be in touch with. 
it's more of like a plug and play play after that um then of course you need to to understand a bit like you need to be able to use your laptop because you do the discounting and everything with with the self with cloud where you have access uh, with your phone or laptop so basically so you platform. you have a you have a whole platform built around the software that people yes. would then have a login to log into and access their dashboard let's yes. not let's not let's let's not understate this this is a, you know you've built a platform right yeah. that manages all of the machines and a person would come in and then use that platform in order to manage everything. They don't have to worry about anything else, right? They just use the platform. Correct. And if you, for instance, like uh, anybody can refill that you kind of give the access to it. So you can control that the one person only can open the door and put stuff in. And when they close the door, then the system automatically has priced them. You can change the price. You can have happy hours. You can build bundle discounts. Like uh, I always say that McDonald's, you never need the fries. But since it's a good deal, <laughs> you always take the fries, right? Do you do that <laughs> as well? I love that. That's true, though. You always get the fries. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, but that, that's the same. I'm, I was laughing at the airports. You go all for always for two bottles, since the other one's minus fifty percent off. And yeah, so, you always get a discount. Yeah, yeah. So you can do morning discounts and others. So all those you can control by a computer for your individual cabinets for your location based or full fleet um and when the item has run out so it automatically system knows that it's not going to show it on the screen anymore you, promote and that's and, you, and you get a notification when things are starting to run out like if there's only yes. one left or and and is, this is a refrigerated vending machine i assume because you're talking about salads and drinks and things like that yeah we have a freezer a refrigerated one and then an ambient one to sell i think the coolest items that have been sold by events is actually mini fridges or sleeping bags and again based on the demand you can see that okay if you have a uh, it was a gaming event. They were using our <laughs> machines. So they were seeing that, okay, this is what's needed. And then based on data, you can see that, okay, now the sleeping packs were gone. I'll bring the next one if I need. Or if they're not selling, you just take them out and fill it with something else. So this is the flexibility that has been lacking with the standard vending machines a lot, or even, even shops that you're tied with the certain products that you're going to sell. And if they're not going to sell, so you only use those tactics here. You can change at any time, change the location. It even has... The machines have wheels underneath them, so it's. Oh, you can wheel you, you can around, wheel them you out. Can, yeah, you could do that. Yes, you can wheel them out, so someone could just take the whole machine. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but then it's <laughs> uh, it has a four G connection there, so you would see where it's going, and then going there, it's like, hey, you have my vending machine. Right? <laughs> okay, all right. I was gonna say, there's a party down the street with this vending machine. <laughs> uh, so, so you have to put in your credit card or your Apple Pay or something in order to open the door. I'm assuming, yeah. right? And then as soon as you take something out, then it charges you immediately. So you can't just open the door and steal everything. Um, no. You said it's not in America yet. What's it going to take to get them here? Yeah, we are going <clears throat> coming to Dallas for NAMA show now in May. And, and we have a plans to come there later in the year in 24. So let's hope it will go well. So we have to certify the products and, and be, be there. But uh, there's a lot of demand. And I know America is very advanced with vending machines. So we're yeah. more than happy to come. There. They're everywhere. Vending machines are everywhere. Yeah. And if you put these yeah. in strategic locations, I think that you'll, I mean, like I already know for a fact from, you know, traveling, being places, there are so many places where there just is no food available or healthy food available. And it's frustrating, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's really frustrating. So putting these in places where even resorts and hotels, I would think is also a place because there are areas, I just went on a trip and uh, there was no food in between the, 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 the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There was just like snacks and I, and I wanted a place to be able to go get some and I couldn't. So yeah. um, I just think you have a lot of opportunities for this. Um, now, looking ahead, how do you see AI in particular um, continuing to evolve in the retail and vending machine sectors? Yeah, I think that it comes a lot with that whenever you need something, so it's there for you. So basically, there's a lot of data points that would have been telling us that Jason is going there and missing these things. So, I mean, this is just going to be enhanced by AI and, and technology a lot more that you don't need to worry about it. It's just taken care of. It kind of is, a, a, that's what the predictive um, things mean, that it can tell that something is happening here. Um, I think the coolest thing is then like the weather changes or events that you're not paying attention to when there's a big need of something. So that has been already kind of predicted beforehand and everything is prepared. Whereas now it's more like that you're just always reacting and then you're, you don't get what you need at where you are. So I think that's going to change with this. You know, I just realized I was thinking while you were telling me this, like I could be walking around the city, you know, with some friends and all of a sudden I'm hungry. I, I look at an app and I click on I'm hungry. And then it tells yeah. me, okay, this self-leave vending machine has the salad you like, the sandwich you like, and the drink you like two blocks away. Oh, 
perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna. There we go. That that that's smart. That's brilliant. I love it. And where can people find out more about what you guys do? Yeah, selfishstore.com. Our web page is good, and and we are quite active on LinkedIn. So find us there, Selfish Store. I'm um, LinkedIn pages. So there, there we share a lot of things that we are doing, and and happy to connect myself as well on LinkedIn if you're there. Awesome. Thank us. Like this was awesome. Hope you guys learned something, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Yeah.